Hello, everyone. Welcome to this new episode of Global Entrepreneur. I am here today with Graeme, one of my, um, you know, a friend of mine that I met at the Global Student Entrepreneur Awards in uh, Silicon Valley. Um, this guy, uh, he really works closely with uh, the sports business and, and he's really involved in football uh, or soccer for those of you watching the U.S. So, uh, Graeme, the mic's all yours. Yeah, f thanks a lot for having me, Pablo. Really appreciate it, and yeah, we're excited to be on here. Um, so it's just, did you want me just to start off at the beginning and kind of yeah, sure. Where I'm well, from and all that start stuff? Start tell telling us. So you know, um, the the idea of this of this channel is to talk a little more about uh, global entrepreneurs. So why don't you tell us your story uh, since you were in Scotland and then how you moved yeah. to the US and and yeah, just to put everyone in context. Yeah. So. I'm originally from Scotland, named Graham, Graham Eaglesham. Um, so yeah, originally from Scotland, grew up there for, you know, most part of my life for about 20 years and kind of had your typical, typical upbringing, was from a huge soccer family, just grew up playing soccer every weekend. As soon as school finished, I was out kicking a soccer ball around with my friends and just loved the sport really. And that was kind of my whole childhood. And then went to you know high school and then graduated high school and was fortunate enough to play professional soccer for a couple of years in yeah. Scotland. Um, and then an opportunity arose to move from Scotland to go to America on a soccer scholarship and go to university and have school paid for and play on the, the, the soccer team over here in America, which was in a city called Omaha, Nebraska, like right in the middle of America. Mm -hmm. And when that opportunity arose, it kind of piqued my interest because in Scotland there isn't you know a huge amount of money involved in soccer. Yeah. Um. So and I was an 18 year old kid at the time, or 18, 19 year old, and you know just the idea of kind of getting an education as well as just soccer, I felt, I felt like that would be a good opportunity for me. So ended up sort of moving out to America, um, played soccer there. Um, at the university, it was awesome. Um, I did return home to Scotland for a brief period to play soccer again there. Picked up a sort of career-ending injury. I blew out my ACL, so couldn't uh, play soccer anymore. Uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was tough, but at that point, I hadn't quite finished university in America. So I re after I received my injury in Scotland, I moved back to America to go and finish um, my, my education, which was a... Yeah, um, sport management. Sport management is what I studied, and at that point, while I was back at school, I kind of realised the opportunity in business to to have a soccer business here in America. Yeah, and that's kind of when we got into what I'm doing now, which is sort of the operations and running programs for an organisation called Future Kids. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that's sort of the next portion of I guess what we'll get into. But yeah. That's um that's kind of the back the back story of kind of how I ended up in Scotland and now in America. That's awesome. So tell me, I have a couple of questions for you. So first yeah. of all, how was uh, navigating through you know having your your injury and 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 knowing that you know your sort of your aspirations of of being a soccer player uh, were now over? Was it difficult? How did you overcome that situation and and sort of like still shift it in a way where you could still be in the soccer business? Yeah, so initially it was really difficult, you know, like it was yeah. such a huge part, huge part of my life. That's kind of yeah. all I really did without without thinking about it. That's all I did. I played soccer, I watched it, I, I talked about it. Yeah. And then, you know, the first few months after that kind of injury and you realize I'm probably not going to be playing this again or at least for a long time. You know, you don't really want to talk about soccer as much. You, yeah. you don't want to watch it. You don't want to watch it as much. So you you're in a kind of a, a limbo kind of place that, you know, you, you're trying to occupy yourself with other things or, yeah. you know, you're just trying to take your mind off it. And it, that was kind of tough at one point, but then I realized, you know, how lucky I was to get to where I was in soccer, even for a brief period of time. And Absolutely. I had this, I had this realization that, you know, a lot of people helped me on the way there, whether it was my parents taking me to games and stuff. I had some amazing coaches and I, I learned a whole lot over that sort of twenty something year period in soccer from some really great people. So when I was coming back to America I, I realized, you know, 
how big soccer was growing here in America. And I just felt that I had a bit of a duty to go and share the stuff that I'd learned and people spent time to teach me things. So I wanted to go and sort of share that with, with, with everyone that I could, I guess. And, and yeah, man, and I think just it's awesome that, you know, after going through such a huge trauma in life, especially emotionally, you were still able to overcome that and, and still be pushing to, you know, become an entrepreneur and be in the soccer business. Uh, so yep. tell me a little bit more about how was uh, your sort of your arrival to the U.S. Was that hard at first? Were there any cultural differences that you had to overcome when you were in school or was it easy for you to adapt? How was that experience? So, again... I would say it was maybe a lot easier than what some people have it. I think mainly I was on a soccer team with a whole bunch of other British guys, you know, guys from Scotland, England, you know, it was, it was a lot easier to settle in when I'm straight into a team of 20 guys that are kind of the same culture as me. Mm -hmm. um, I know I've got a weird accent. English is my first an only language, so I guess... I, lo I love your accent, so it doesn't really yeah. matter. I think well, everyone's going to love it. Yeah, well, the, the, so the language barrier wasn't as, as hard for me as, you know, obviously someone yeah. coming from maybe South America or something. Yeah, sure. I guess I had to slow my accent down a lot. I speak a lot faster if I'm in Scotland than when I do in America. So that was probably maybe, maybe the only thing. And just, you know, your the usual um, distance between your family and stuff, you know, yeah. um, you have to get on FaceTime and that sort of thing that takes a while to get used to but I think I was a bit lucky and not to have it as difficult as some people probably do yeah for sure I think the good thing is just like you mentioned you were surrounded by this group of people who had common yep. interests and that just made your yep. adaptation completely easier for you yeah um, definitely so so I read on your on your LinkedIn profile that you were involved with Liverpool uh how how is that uh what what's going on there? Like what happened? Yeah, yeah. So I right just right about the time I was finishing up college, I had a chance to go out to California to to work. It was um in Northern California, uh -huh. um a place called Los Gatos, right close to where we were at the yeah oh, yeah, right. yeah. And you know there was um in Los Gatos there was a Liverpool North American Soccer Academy. Um, that I had the chance to go and work for and you know I coached a, a lot of teams there and uh, the gentleman that owns that company actually has um, a lot of after school soccer programs which is where I learned a lot for the idea for future kids here in Nebraska yeah. so that sort of time in California was a great learning experience for me and the, the gentleman's name was Alex Saunders and he was a a great soccer entrepreneur who I learned a lot from and you know that that time in Liverpool, or California but coaching for Liverpool specifically helped a lot when I moved back to Nebraska to then you know dive into my own sort of entrepreneurial journey. So how did you decide to start Future Kids? Would you say going to California was a jump start to everything or, or how, how, how did you say like how did you sit down and say all right I'm gonna do this like I'm gonna start yep. You know, open my 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 own organization and, and be an entrepreneur. How how was that experience? Yep. So, I would say, the, the the seed got planted as soon as I came to America and realized that they have a a pay to play system here. Yeah. Um, in sports in general, but specifically soccer. For those that aren't familiar with the pay to play system, it basically means it costs a lot of money for parents to sign their kid up to play yeah. on a soccer team. Absolutely. And um, in Scotland, that's not the case. Uh, I'm sure it's not the case in a lot of places in South America that, you know, back home and, and with you guys, parents normally don't have to pay like $1,000 a season to enroll their kid in a, a soccer program. They're readily available for the most part. Yeah. So when, when I came to America, I realized that that was kind of crazy. And I was like, well, there's going to be a lot of kids that can afford to get good soccer coaching. So I was always kind of thinking about this. This is when I was first in Nebraska, moved to California. I was working for, for Liverpool and working in some schools there. And I just liked the way it was set up. And I, I knew there wasn't anything like that back in Nebraska, um, in the city of Omaha. I knew there was nothing like it. And I felt that, you know, that could be a good, a good business model um, to, to set that up for kids, specifically ones that couldn't afford to go and join the, 
you know, the more well-off soccer clubs that cost a lot of money. Mm-hmm. We could try and provide a service that is similar, you know, with good coaches and good training and good equipment, but the kids don't have to pay for it. It is paid by, you know, the school's budget or some yeah. outside funding sources or whatever we can make it work, but we just wanted to provide the service. So I think the seed was planted along the way. But yeah, when I saw the whole dynamic in California and how it was working there, the penny dropped and I was like, oh, this could be a great idea for, you know, back in Omaha, Nebraska, which is then after then I moved back to, to Omaha. And, you know, after a period of time, we, we sort of set up future kids. That's awesome. That's great. Um, and, you know, one thing I really stress on, 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 on many of my videos is that as an entrepreneur, you have to be really resourceful, right? And yep. I feel like part of your success is because you've been super resourceful when it comes to getting grants and, uh, and sort of finding sources to be able to, uh, you know, bring this mission to, to life. So why don't yep. you tell us a little bit more about how, how that worked for you? Yeah, absolutely. So I think it helped me a lot. The fact that, you know, I love soccer so much and I, I thought that this was a problem that I could actually help. Yeah. Um, more so because, you know, I was passionate about it, but I had so many friends and, you know, connections that coach soccer yeah. and that would that I knew would want to be involved in this somehow. So I knew that we could make a big impact. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I've got to, I've got to act on this. You know, I can't, you know, just think about it. So really being resourceful for me and hopefully someone could take something from this. I literally went on Google and I got the list of every single elementary and middle school in wow. Omaha, Nebraska. That's I got the awesome. list because yeah. you go on Google and the list is there and you find the specific contact person. They're probably called a program director or site director. Yes. They have all their email and phone numbers and I contacted every single one of them. Wow. And then if they didn't reply, I contacted them again because I wow. was like, I literally was, I said to myself, I've got to do this. Like these kids need this. Yeah. So that was my biggest resourcefulness was I just went and took massive action on it. And, yeah. you know, at the time we had one school that became four, four became 10. Yeah. And today, today, Pablo, we actually have probably about 60 different schools across wow. Nebraska. Congratulations, man. That's insane. No, thanks a lot. We're, we're in two different cities. We're in three different rural towns in Nebraska. It's pretty wow. crazy. That's insane. And right before, Right before all this Corona virus stuff, we were down in Denver. We had schools ready to start in Denver, and we were about to travel to Boston to set up schools there through a different partnership that we have. Yeah, but we had to cancel the trip because of what's going on right now. But well, yeah, you know, just- I think I think after all this situation is over, a lot of people are wanna you know gonna want to start doing activity again, like physically yep. and, and and exercise. So you're you're you know you're you're gonna have your chance there. So it's just a matter of yep. Place. But yeah, you know, one thing I find crazy is like, there's no information on how to start this way, you know, because it's it's funny because with airlines, you know, it was a very similar case with me. You know, when we started, I also went on Google, found, you know, the the contact information for every single CEO, vice president, everyone in the airline business, and just started sending thousands of emails to everyone. And I would do the same thing, would just keep on following up and contacting people on LinkedIn. And I guess that's how you start. It's not, you know, it's not rocket science. It's just as easy as sending an email so yeah for for everyone watching this you know it's not just me the one doing this it's everyone so hopefully you know or at least you know other entrepreneurs like you man and and that leads to huge success so yeah you just gotta be, you gotta believe that your idea or your service can help them yeah and and you know you want to try and do it in a way maybe you don't want to be super annoying and stuff of course, but yeah you as long like, as you're not you, pestering people you know just you can yeah just yeah just like just like hey this is what we've been doing I, I, i'd like to talk to you how we could help you or, or wow. you know just something like that and the more if you it's just let's face it math you know if you do that over a certain amount of times eventually one of them is going to yeah. drop or one's going to lead to something and then once you start talking to some person they might know another person and it's like this crazy web yes. it'll just happen crazy network so so yeah. tell me tell me about uh how you guys are handling growth because you know obviously going from one high school to six different schools yeah really spreading all across the country that's probably you know super exciting but also challenging at the same time right you you probably need to gather a larger team and and sort of have a different structure as you grow how are you handling that yeah it's um a lot of it is learning as we go um we have we have including myself we have four full-time staff so that helps a lot 
Um, and then a lot of our, you know, a lot of our soccer coaches are part time. Um, a lot of them are college athletes, and you know, they they have their sports going on, but they want to coach at night and and make some extra money. So that's great. So a large a large amount of our staff base as college athletes mm -hmm. and, and you know I in the sometimes I go and help coach the the college soccer team that I used to play at myself so I help those guys coach during their season it's like a, a three-month season I go and help them and that helps me stay connected to a large amount of the staff base yeah who, who can then when there's that many of them it's from the men's program the women's program they can be spread out across a you know a large area and we can do a lot of schools mm -hmm. Um, so that's how we take care of um, Omaha, and we have the same model over in Lincoln, Nebraska, which is a different city. Yeah. We partnered with an another university there. Um, so those athletes take care of those schools. And in terms of going to other cities, this is when uh, another organization called Challenger Sports, who have been around for about 25 years, coaching a lot of soccer camps and, and that sort of thing, but they've never been able to you know, grow the after school soccer market like we have. So we've kind of came in and partnered with them and we've helped navigate and, and get the school set up in those areas and they are going to provide the coaches yeah. in, in those areas. So that's how we're kind of trying to, that's how we're scaling it at the minute. Um, it had been going pretty well right until the current situation, but we'll, we'll be ready once it's, um, of course. once it's all taken care of. That's awesome. And what's your what's your future vision? Are you uh, kind of like do you do you wanna what what's your vision for future kids? You want to keep going, or are you thinking at some point to do other different projects? Are you thinking about maybe going back to Scotland and doing something similar? What's what's your take on this? So my my plan or my vision is, I would say, you know, definitely I'm going to be in America, and I want future kids to just help as many kids as we possibly can across the whole of America is what I would love. Um, I want to keep perfecting how things are in Omaha and then implement that in our other locations. Um, you know, what I, we've started adding in a couple extra sports. Um, we added a tennis program. We added a kids fitness program. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're sort of going to be working on a, a girls only multi-sport program um, and soccer's our main main sport of course um, so I would love these to be staples across America that kids no matter what economic background they have know that they can go to a future kids program and they know they're going to get you know a good coach a good group of team that they can be on if they want um, that's my kind of main vision and I would love eventually one day to have you know a place where in each of these cities you know a place where they go you know like a ymca kind of style thing but it's a future kids yeah. location that they can go to you know and it has the soccer fields it has the, all the the sporting facilities that a rich family could take their kids to no problem on the weekends or after school sure. i want it to be i want something like that to be available for you know a kid that maybe doesn't have the same sort of resources, but they can go there and get the same opportunities from when they're in elementary school right through to they're ready to go to college or something like that. That's my kind of long-term vision for future kids. That's awesome. Yeah, and I'm I'm absolutely positive that that's going to happen. So, you know, best of My luck man. to you, I know for sure that's going to be great. You know, hopefully if I have kids, I'm going to be able to send them to your academy in the future. <laughs> yeah, that's what we want. Get them up. Yeah. Uh, so, so let's talk a little bit more about um, physical fitness and, you know, staying healthy, eating well, sleeping well, uh, you know, just to share a little bit of, of a story. When I went to university, I was actually like 30 or 40 pounds heavier. Um, and, you know, at, at one point I said, you know, I have to, you know, stay healthy and, and start uh, working yep. out and start sleeping well. So, you know, not only I dropped those 40 pounds, but also I started, you know, being a lot more energetic. Uh, yeah. I was, you know, a lot more vigorous, had a lot more, uh, you know, sort of, I could last throughout the entire day without being tired. Um, and, yeah. and it just improved every single other aspect of my life, you know, when it comes to uh, not only just like academics, but also, you know, dating and playing sports and doing many other things. And yeah. that's why I usually like really stress uh, the fact that it's very important to work out, you know, have good, good sleep, 
So what was your philosophy on working out and, and how do you how do you see sort of during this time of quarantine, you know, people that are sitting at their homes all day, like what are some good tips you would give them uh, to to sort of move their body? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I am a huge advocate of, of fitness as well. It's a huge part of my life. Um, when I stopped playing soccer, eventually it was, you know, getting into fitness and just exercising and eating well that kind of took my mind off of, you yeah. know, a bad, a bad injury. So I'm totally with you. It just, you know, it makes you feel better. You have more confidence. Um, it's obviously huge, huge importance. And I think a good tip would be, for people that are sitting at home and in quarantine would be, you know, once you wake up, just get up and get yourself moving. Not, yeah. not necessarily, not necessarily a workout straight away, but just get out of bed, maybe just stretch your legs, whatever it is, walk up the stairs and, you know, take a shower or something like just get your body moving Yeah. and don't just kind of be stuck laying there for a while. Yeah. Get, get moving first. And then, you know, I'd say have some sort of workout during the day, whether that's going out a walk or, you know, there's, online there's loads of home workout routines right now like yeah. whether that's push-ups or you know putting some groceries in a bag and you know doing some curls or some sort of workout I'd, I'd say definitely get your body moving and get that yeah you know I'm not I'm not sure what it's like in Colombia if you're allowed the one walk per day I know here in the US you can go out walking once a day or in the UK as well but just get your body moving somehow and you're going to feel a lot lot better absolutely yeah I feel like um <clears throat> So I think one thing that really helps is, you know, tr and all, also, you know, in entrepreneurship in general is uh, being consistent, you know? So yep. uh, I guess one good thing about working out is that you learn the habit of just doing things repeatedly, even though yep. sometimes you may not feel like doing it, you know? And yep. that really translates well to entrepreneurship. You know, sometimes you're really tired and you still have to do yep. it, but you, you know, you just do it. So yep. um one thing that worked for me was, you know, at, at first what I would start doing was uh, like workouts that would take like an hour and a half to complete. And then what I did was I did sort of more workouts per week, but with, in shorter intervals of time. So I yep. would do like 20 to 30 minutes and I would, you know, I, I try to shift from doing a lot of cardio to like high intensity interval training. Yep. So, you know, as I started becoming more fit, now I could not, I could also like save a lot of time, right? Because yep. when I was in school, kind of like going to the gym already took me like 15 to 20 minutes and then just working out for an hour and a half and then going back and taking a shower. Yep, it was a lot of time. It was, you know, like three, three hours just to work out. So it took too much. Yeah. Like it, it just took too long. Right. And then I shifted yep. to this, you know, following YouTube videos and doing hit for like 20 to 30 minutes and I would, I could do it yep. anywhere. I could even do it in my college dorm, uh, my dorm yep. room. So, um, I guess that really helped for me. So is there any advice you would give people on like, what are your top three tips on staying healthy and working out? Staying healthy and working out top three tips would be one, have a plan. So like you said, you watched your YouTube videos and you found what you liked or whatever. Yeah. So put that under the umbrella, have a plan and you know, over time make it something that you quite enjoy yeah. or don't really, or maybe don't really, really hate. So I'd say, have a plan. Like you said, be consistent as possible. So like, you know, you might not want to do it, but once you've done it, never really do you do a workout and think, oh man, I wish I didn't do that. You know, you're always like, okay, I feel pretty good after doing that. So yeah, have a plan, be consistent with it. And I would think also, I'll go against the grain a little bit here, but don't be too hard on yourself. Yeah. would be the third one. Like don't yeah. be too hard on yourself like as far as don't think it needs to be perfect straight away yeah don't be don't be frustrated with yourself if you know you might be out of shape for a while and feel like oh this or comparing yourself to someone else that can do more of whatever so don't be hard on yourself and just you know praise yourself if you do even a part of a workout one day yeah. next day you do a bit more and a bit more so i, I think that goes a long way because if you if you're constantly you know beating up on yourself or you know, not happy with how you did or yeah. thinking you're not in a good spot. You're not going to keep it going. So don't be hard on yourself. Yeah. I think, I think that's absolutely true. Like if, if you're, you know, like day one, you try to do a workout at 100%, you're going to be yeah. dead by the next day. So it's yeah. usually better to sort of like manage how you, you know, your energy by kind of like working out at like 80, 70 or 80% capacity, yep. but doing it consistently. 
and then at some point that 80 percent becomes your 100 percent from the past week so yep that helps one thing i also yeah, it's like a snowball yeah one one other thing that really helps is to kind of like vary your workouts you know do different things uh kind of like yep. go swimming one day go take a run you know go like go yep. walk or i don't know lift weights dance you know whatever like you know there, there's just so many different ways of exercising uh, yeah, or, 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 or like play sports too, right? Like try to get friends who are very like uh, active and just try to go and play tennis with them or play soccer. That really yep. you. Cause if you're only working out, you get bored at some point, right? If you just stick. Yeah. With them, you know, yeah. If you do, if, if you do the same thing constantly, it's going to, you know, you're going to get bored of it or you might not put as much effort into it and stuff. So yeah, if you can do other things that you enjoy, like you say, there's so many ways of just exercising and, yeah getting the body moving so uh i have you know one of my best friends and i actually interviewed him on, on, a, on a previous episode uh he really loves soccer and you know i guess one one question that that he would probably get excited about is like what trends do you see in soccer coaching and and sort of in in the world of soccer and um and and what what things do you see that are going to be happening in, in the future you know trends I would say in soccer coaching there's a lot of trends as far as especially I've noticed the past couple of weeks that a lot of people have been in quarantine there is a lot of coaches sort of coming together online and you know sharing different resources and and things of that nature that's that, that's a bit of a change there is a lot of a lot more video analysis is going on in soccer coaching um you know through different software systems you can record your team playing or practicing and then watch it back um years gone by that was maybe only available to the professional teams but here now it's available for college teams club soccer teams wow um there's a lot of video analysis going in to soccer coaching at the minute um and i think just the the space that future kids are in you know kind of making soccer more available to sort of lower income kids and just getting soccer out there more to, to kids that maybe couldn't afford it that in, in itself is a bit of a trend that we've kind of hit the wave at the right time so definitely a lot of online coaches communities are growing um the video analysis is growing massively and just getting soccer more kind of available to to lower income populations are probably the three trends that i would say is happening that's awesome yeah for sure um and and how do you how do you learn more about uh, coaching and and becoming a soccer coach and how do you teach yourself? What resources do you find? How's your routine there? Like what's yeah? What how do you learn that? Yeah, so I guess the the if I was starting again coaching or I was just getting into it or I just wanted to learn more, I would go and you know like shadow other coaches and mm -hmm. you know watch their practice sessions and ask them questions. That, that's that's a one really effective way if you know someone that is doing it and you can go and watch what they're doing and you can maybe pick up little things from there they, they do have you know sort of coaching courses that you can go on and um, there's diff different courses that you can go on you can learn stuff there's loads of online resources um, if you can get yourself you know just even on especially on actually I go on Twitter quite a lot um, there's a lot of soccer coaches on Twitter that will share resources there, whether that's, you know, different protocols that they follow when they're coaching or things that they've learned. Yeah. Um, so qu quite a bit of reading, shadowing coaches. Um, like anything else, YouTube is huge. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube you can learn. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I would say that. Um, I, I was lucky that I was up product of good soccer coaching for 20 years you know i was on the receiving end of it so i was always being it was easy fed to that transition and just go on to coaching later probably right yes yeah, so, so, so for me personally i was lucky and i was fed that information for 20 years solid so i right. knew a lot of it of course there's still loads that i can learn and uh, try and do learn a lot of that but if i was kind of coming in on a bit of a fresh slate i would say shadow someone that is you know knows what they're doing and has been doing it for a while and do that with multiple people you know, get involved in some online coaching platforms and get that resources that they're sharing and, you know, get on some, some YouTube and watch some of the sessions and seminars that are on there. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, and then how about the, what's I going to ask? 
Um, we're talking about soccer, coaching, shadowing. Um, hold on. I forgot. There was, a health, there was a healthy lifestyle as well. We're talking about that. Yeah. Um, I think this had to do uh, with soccer. So how about, let's say, when, when you're trying to shadow someone, right? Yep. Um, does this happen, uh, like, you know, because different coaches have like different philosophies, right? Yep. So how, how can you find sort of the, the, the right coach for you? How, how can you find the right person? Yeah. So what I would, if it was me, what I would do, I'd figure out, okay, what, what sort of age range do you want to learn about coaching from? You know, like, are you trying to coach? young kids to start with? Are you trying to figure out how college coaches work? Are you trying to figure out, you know, whatever that age rate of high school? So you figure that out first. And then I would say, okay, how do I want to coach? Like, am I going to be one that's yelling at people all the time? Am I going to be more sort of laissez-faire kind of, how do you want to be as a coach? And then, you know, if there's a way, you know, if you don't know the coach personally or don't know coaches personally, you could contact, you know, an organization like a soccer club and contact one of the admins there and say, Hey, I was just looking to learn more about coaching. Do you have a coach that matches this style of coaching? You know? Yeah. And then they, they would know or All they would this. ask someone that knows and then they could say, Oh, you would, you'd be great working with Joe. You know, you're wow. pretty laid back. Joe's a laid back. He works for the young kids. I'm going to introduce you to Joe or, you know, if it's like, Hey, I want to coach college. Like, contact someone in that area and be like, do you know a coach that coaches college that, you know, brings the intensity all the time and is pretty hands-on and if that's your style, then there'll be like a, maybe not the, the university itself, but there'll be a, a state soccer organization normally mm -hmm. that kind of over the governing body of soccer for that area would, would probably know and would definitely know the coaches and their styles. So I would probably go down that route. That's amazing. Uh, and then how about, for example, if you want to become a professional coach, do you need any sort of certification? Yep. How do you get those? Uh, and especially for people. So my, I have, you know, one of my closest friends, he, uh, he's not, and I think I mentioned him to you. He's, uh, he's yep. finance, but he's really passionate about soccer and he wants to yep. transition into becoming a coach because, you know, uh, he, he really loves this and he's been watching a lot of soccer uh, since, since he was a kid. Uh, how, what would you recommend him to do uh, as, as far as, you know, transitioning into the world of coaching uh, and, and what certifications would he have to, to get? Yep. I so, yeah, so um, depending on, most countries have their governing body. So we'll take um, America, for example. Yeah, yeah. The US. yeah, he's from the US. Yeah, so we have the US Soccer Federation who are like the governing body. And, you know, they have different levels of, courses that you can take for soccer co soccer coaching so the first actually i think there's a couple that are online that you can take without you know going anywhere you can do them online the kind of first two and i'm pretty sure the next one is it's like the grassroots level where you know you'll go to like a, a couple day or spend a few hours each day at a seminar they'll teach you about coaching once you pass that you go into you know it's like a e-license or an and then the next one's a D license, C, D, all the way up to like A. And then after that, I'm pretty sure it's like a pro license. So it goes from sort of an online course to a grassroots, all the way up the levels to be a professional soccer coach. If, you know, if that's what you want to do, once you get to the professional level and the higher up licenses, that's when you would be looking at, okay, I could go and coach or be the head coach of a, a college soccer team or, you know, be involved in a, professional soccer team and then once you get one of those jobs and you do well that's when you can apply for the next job which is maybe higher up or you know that's the way a lot of coaches tend to do it that's awesome that's really cool um and i guess you know just to wrap it up what would be your tips for people who want to become an entrepreneur especially people coming from different countries you know people who are global uh what would you say there yeah i think um if you're going to be looking at being an entrepreneur, I think what helped me a lot was because I didn't set out to be, you know, I didn't have in my head, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. That wasn't really the way I thought it out. The way I thought it out was, right, I'm pretty good at this. 
I really like this, which is soccer and, and the coaching and getting that sort of thing. I'm like, I'm pretty good at this. I like this. You know, I think I could make this into a business model that could help a lot of people and, you know, I could earn an income from it. So that was kind of my thought process. And the fact that I really liked it and I knew a lot about it, I, I would easily spend more time on it. If it was so, like if it was something else that I wasn't as passionate about or it was for someone else, I probably wouldn't have been as resourceful and been on Google for hours finding all the information and contacting everyone. Mm-hmm. So it was easy. It was easier for me to spend a lot of time on it and put a lot of work into it because I cared about it. So I think I would say that would be my top bit of advice would be, you know, try and find something that you either really like or you're you're pretty good at it that you've yeah. spent a lot of time on it or you're willing to spend a lot of time on it. Um, and you, I think you get a lot further than you would if it was just something random that you maybe wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think that, that would be my main tip. That's awesome. All right. Well, thanks, man. Um, I think, you know, this is a super cool conversation I'm going to share with everyone. Uh, and uh, do you have any other questions or thoughts or comment or comments or anything? No, it was, thanks a lot for having me on. I think Please. whatever anyone's, I think whatever anyone's doing, I think if you have, you know, if you're passionate about it, great, but you've got to have a, a real kind of belief yes. about what you're doing and a belief in yourself. Yeah. Because crazy things can happen. See if you're consistent with what you're believing in and you get, bring energy with it and you share that with people and you share that with more people, you know, crazy things can happen. Mm-hmm. And you, you know that, you know that yourself, you know, yeah. you just believe it and you're, you'll be, yeah. you'll be something like even to this day, I'll turn around and I'll, you know, something will happen and I'll say to, you know, my, one of the, someone that works with us or whatever. And I'll say, can you believe that? Like, how did this happen? Like, Jesus. Like, even to this day, I can, I'll still say, it, I'll go, oh my God, like, yeah. what, how is this happening? But it's just from constantly. It's constant know. grinding and it all starts with sending yeah. an email, right? It's that simple. Yeah. 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 You send an email, you get a phone number, you make a call, you get another call, you just have another email address. Calling. Yeah. 100%, yeah. 100% man. All right. Well, that's, that's awesome. I, w- I would like you to have, uh, if you could send me a link to the website or, or any other yep. sort of like social media, uh, future kids, I can put it in the description section. Uh, yep. And uh, you know, if anyone watching this episode, if you guys have questions for either Graham or for me, uh, please yep. just, you know, write those questions and like our video. Uh, so that's, that's all for today. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks man. Uh,